Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to derive the three equations of motion which you saw in the higher physics course. So let's get started. Now we're going to use calculus to derive the three equations of motion that you saw at higher level. And it should be noted that these derivations are examinable in the advanced higher exam. So you could be asked to derive any of these three equations of motion. So the first one we're going to look at is deriving V equals U plus AT. And remember that is just the acceleration equation from National 5 rearranged in the form of the final velocity V. So if we start with our expression for acceleration, written in terms of the second differential of displacement, A equals D squared S by DT squared, then we can integrate both sides with respect to time. So we've got the integral of d squared s by dt squared dt is equal to the integral of a dt. Now notice all we've done here is we've swapped the order of these. So we put this over to the left hand side and this over to the right hand side. And then we've added in our integral signs and then we've added in dt afterwards to show that we're integrating with respect to time. So if we integrate on the left hand side first, we have ds by dt. And then integrating on the right hand side, a on its own will become a times the t. So so that is a times t plus a constant. So the constant we're going to call k in this case. Now we need to consider what happens to the equation when t equals 0 and when t equals t. In other words, just looking at the initial conditions. So at a time of t equals 0, before the object has started moving, we could say that ds by dt is equal to u i.e. the initial velocity of the object. So putting that into this equation here, if we consider time t to be zero, then this expression disappears and we have ds by dt is equal to k, but we're saying that ds by dt at t equals zero is equal to u, so that means that k equals u, so our constant is equal to u at t equals zero. So that means we can replace k, the constant, with our symbol u, and at a time of t equals t, some random time after t equals zero, then we can say that ds by dt is equal to v, i.e. the final velocity of the object. So that means we can rewrite this as v equals at plus u, or in the form that we want to show it as v equals u plus at. So that's us derived the first equation of motion. Looking at the second equation of motion, we're going to be deriving s equals ut plus a half at squared. So starting with the first equation of motion this time, v, which we can rewrite as ds by dt, Remember v is equal to u plus at. So we can write this as ds by dt is equal to u plus at. And now we're going to integrate both sides again with respect to time, just like we did for the first equation of motion. So we've got the integral of ds by dt dt is equal to the integral of u plus at dt. So we're going to be integrating each of these parts separately. So integrating the left hand side first of all with respect to time just gives us s. And then integrating the right hand side, if we do this one first, we get ut plus at squared divided by two. So that is the same as saying a half at squared. And remember, we need to add a constant on the end as well, so plus k. So we end up with s equals ut plus a half at squared plus k, where k is our constant. Just like before, we need to consider our initial conditions, what happens when t equals zero. Well, it's common sense to think that at a time of t equals zero, before our object has started moving, it's not moved any displacement yet, so we must be able to say that s equals zero. So that means that if we plug in t equals zero and s equals zero into this expression, we have this disappears, this disappears, and this disappears because it's zero, so we have that k is equal to zero. So that means we can write simply our second equation of motion as s equals ut plus a half at squared, and that means we've derived that one. Lastly, we're going to be deriving v squared equals u squared plus 2as, our third equation of motion. So to do this, we're going to start with our first equation of motion, v equals u plus at, and we're going to be doing a bit of algebraic manipulation here. So we're going to start by squaring both sides. So if we do that, we get v squared equals u plus at all squared. So so we're just going to expand that to make it easier to multiply out. So that is equal to u plus at times u plus at. So that means we get on the left hand side v squared is equal to, and then on the right hand side you can see we do u times u gives us u squared down here, plus u times at plus at times u. So we can just write that as 2u at and then plus at times at. So that's going to give us a squared t squared. So that means we've got v squared equals u squared plus 2u at plus a squared t squared. And now a bit more maths, we're going to factorise by taking 2a outside the brackets on the right hand side. So we've got v squared equals u squared plus 2a times ut plus a half at squared. And the half is introduced because we've introduced the two here. So if we were to re-multiply that out, you could see that the two times the half will make that fraction disappear and it just becomes one. And hopefully this expression in the brackets looks familiar to you because we've just derived it as the second equation of motion. So it says that we can now substitute for the second equation of motion s in the brackets 
to get v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So that's us derived our third equation of motion. Now for each of the three equations of motion, remember we can use SUVAT to write down what we know on the left hand side when we're trying problems. And remember that S is displacement measured in metres, U is initial velocity measured in metres per second, V is final velocity measured in metres per second, A is acceleration measured in metres per second squared, and T is time measured in seconds. Lastly, we just need to note that if acceleration varies with time in a simple way, calculus can be used to solve the motion. So you have to make sure that you can differentiate and integrate expressions of acceleration as functions of time. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.